Documentaries can always be a hit or miss proposition, but in this particular batch, I found a bunch of really good ones. First up, we have two programs from PBS's Nature documentary series, Revealing the Leopard and Wolverine Chasing the Phantom. And um, these are both really solid nature documentaries. Now, of course, you have to like a good nature documentary, I think, to get into these. Neither of them sort of transcends the genre. They're not groundbreaking films. They are nature documentaries. Uh, the Wolverine one especially is fascinating for me. I always found Wolverines to be really interesting creatures. They're not animals you hear a lot about. I mean, really, their most famous incarnation is the X-Man, Wolverine, uh, who I think some people don't even realize is based on a real creature, but they're sort of these small um, weasel family members that are just incredibly ferocious and can really take down much larger animals. And I think people sort of just forget that they're out there. So that's really interesting. And then, of course, the leopard. I mean, really, anybody, I think, will find birds of uh, birds of prey, um, cats of prey, if you will, large cats, fascinating animals. And, um, and this documentary proves that that is not wrong at all. They are very interesting animals. Um, both of these features, both of these movies run an hour long. They're available on both Blu-ray and DVD, and I looked at the Blu-ray editions, and both of them are uh, quite nice audiovisual presentations. Uh, they both include full surrounds, uh, Dolby Digital surround sound, not True HD surround sound, um, but they're they're pretty good in terms of the surround sound. Uh, you do get some some kind of some nice nature ambiance in each one of them, but these aren't really the type of movies you're going to get a, a full workout from your speakers on. But the picture quality is fantastic. I mean, always anytime I can see nature photography in high def, I'm always happy to. Um, not everything is as fully spectacular as you expect from an, an HD image, depending on how it was shot and the conditions and everything. But I mean, there's really some startling and incredible imagery in both of these documentaries, and they look quite brilliant in high definition. Next up, we have Discovering Hamlet, an interesting look at how different actors portray Shakespeare. And in this case, those two actors are Derek Jacoby and Kenneth Branagh. Uh, and this documentary is narrated by Patrick Stewart. So really you have a collection of some of the greatest Shakespearean actors around all in one film. It's about an hour long film, just a little bit less. Uh, but this disc actually includes about three and a half hours of bonus features. So really you're getting about four hours of content. Just the, the film itself is only about an hour long. Now, as I've stated in the past, I'm not the biggest Shakespeare fan, but at an hour long, the film moves along quite briskly, and it really is a look at kind of at the behind the scenes of the Shakespeare rehearsals and the, how the play goes off and, and run-throughs and stuff like that, and you really get to follow the entire troupe through about a month's worth of, of rehearsals and up to the opening night, and it's really kind of an interesting look at actors and the actor's world when they're portraying kind of this high water mark of theater. Um, and it's interesting, especially more so if you are a Shakespeare fan, I think. But even for someone like me who's not a Shakespeare fan, certainly worth watching. Those aforementioned bonus features include an exclusive interview with Derek Jacoby that runs about a half hour long, and then a second disc filled with bonus scenes footage, uh, cast and crew interviews, and another extended interview with Derek Jacoby. And that actually runs like two and a half hours long. On top of all that, you also get... Um, profiles of different hamlets throughout the ages, cast biographies, a Patrick Stewart biography, a photo gallery, and a 12-page booklet, which is kind of a viewer's guide, uh, including an introduction from the director of the film, a history of the Renaissance Theater Company, and some other text-based materials, which is always nice. I love to see booklets and DVDs, especially for a film like this. Next up, we have Azorian, The Raising of the K-129. This is a really interesting documentary. Interesting enough, you know, because it's not an hour long like the typical PBS documentary. is. It is almost two hours in length. And the story focuses on the Soviet um, missile submarine that went down back in 1968 and lost all of its crew in the central North Pacific. And so... American intelligence found it, even though the Soviets didn't. And they went basically launched this kind of secret mission to raise the sub to try and get Russian secrets out of it um, without the Soviets knowing about it. It's kind of actually, in a way, has hints of the hunt for an October in it, although, of course, it's not about a defection. It's about a, a sunken sub. And um, it's a really interesting story that almost to our runtime does give it, make it a little bit long, but I think for the most part you won't notice it because... Um, the film is interesting enough. I mean, you've got Howard Hughes in this, you've got the CIA, you've got Russians, you've got nuclear submarines. I mean, it's really just a very, very interesting film, uh, especially people who I think have an affinity for naval history will really enjoy this one. There are no extra features on the disc, but again, it's almost two hours long. It's a little bit uh, more running time than the usual PBS documentary. 
Next up, we have the Panama Canal, Gateway to the American Century. This is from the American Experience series, also a PBS documentary. And this one runs an hour and a half. And um, again, it's a really interesting film. It's a look at the creation of the Panama Canal. And I think it's... It's, it's really good to watch because I think the Panama Canal is one of those things that people sort of take for granted or just don't think about really. I mean, it's just been there for so long and people don't really pay attention to it. But this documentary really shows you how, what an amazing feat it was and, and the American ingenuity that went into creating this thing that, that other countries had failed at and it cost, you know, m hundreds of millions of dollars and, and a, a over 5,000 people died while making it. I mean, this really is kind of a story that is filled with stories, if you know what I mean. And and uh, anybody interested in any sort of history whatsoever, I think will get a lot out of watching um, Panama Canal. It really is is worth watching. Then we have Robert E. Lee, uh, which is another American Experience release. And of course, it is also an hour and a half long. And it's really basically a good biography on um, the famed war general, Robert E. Lee. Um Interesting stuff, not as captivating as the Panama Canal movie. If you have a choice between the two, I would definitely pick Panama Canal. But again, a good, solid, kind of more traditional documentary um, biography of Robert E. Lee. If you're a Civil War buff, of course, you're going to enjoy this. Um, some people might find it a little bit dry in places. I, I will say it does suffer a little bit here and there from some pacing. Uh, I think maybe an hour-long documentary on him might have been more interesting but of course i mean this is a guy who did a lot in his lifetime so there's a lot to cover i mean it certainly isn't a, a documentary that dawdles i just think it could have been slightly slightly more edited finally we have another installment of pbs's secrets of the dead series and this is the lost ships of rome and it is very interesting it involves this um team of marine archaeologists who are basically doing a, a survey around the Italian island of Ventotini, and um, they discover the wrecks of five ancient Roman ships that are basically found in like mint condition as if they were made at the bottom of the ocean. And this movie sort of kind of f follows this mystery of what these ships were doing there. They're at the bottom of the sea. They're standing upright. They didn't seem to have crashed or, or really even sunk for that matter. So what are they doing at the bottom of the ocean? Now, of course, as with some of these types of documentaries, the answers that you get are speculative. They're not concrete, 100% final answers. But it's an interesting story, and it's really interesting to see them trying to figure out you know, what these ships uh, were doing, what they were for, and, and really what was the purpose of them, and what happened to them, more importantly. Um, as always, the Secrets of the Dead series is narrated by Lee F. Schreiber, who's fantastic, and I always like him in everything that he does. And um, again, an interesting documentary, and at 60 minutes, it moves along quite nicely, so definitely worth checking out. So there you have it, a bunch of really good documentaries. There's very few in that bunch that I wouldn't recommend to somebody somewhere, as they all have something interesting about them.